It seems like they're announcing a new camera every couple weeks now, and it's got 4K, 6K, 8K, 12K. But I don't care about the Ks. I don't need any Ks. I could just go for 1080p if it actually had good dynamic range. I want 16 stops, 17, 18. What can you give me? I want more stops of dynamic range, and I don't care about the race to the caves. The camera that I'm filming on right now is the Sony a6500, and according to a quick Google search, it says that it has up to 13.7 stops of dynamic range, but I call BS. There's no way. Based on my usage with it, it feels more like about 11 stops of dynamic range. Now, right here, I've also got the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. Now, this one's got the Ks, but the dynamic range, it's, it's, it does good, okay? It's got 13 stops of dynamic range. I've also got the Fujifilm X-T4 right here. And they claim that it has 14 stops of dynamic range. And honestly, I'd say that it gets pretty close to that as well when you're filming in F-Log. So why the heck am I talking about this? And what is dynamic range anyways? Well, I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty details of it because most of you watching are professionals and know exactly what I'm talking about. But the basics of it is what can your camera sensor read and see? What information can it store in the highlights and shadows at the same time? And at what point do those shadows get completely crushed or those highlights get totally clipped. Now you're watching this video and you're wondering how on earth can I add three stops of dynamic range to my camera? I mean, can I swap out the sensor or do some crazy computer programming and get some firmware update that makes it that much better? No, it's uh, much more simple than that. And it's all about using different filters. Now I've got it balanced on my gimbal here and that's intentional to show you guys that yes, you can actually balance your entire gimbal and run with this filter system in the front without any issues. So this is basically a simple screw on filter kit. And these are really popular with photographers. This is just a standard four x four ND filter that drops right into this filter holder. When it comes to actually getting this set up on the front of your lens, it's actually really simple and I'll walk you guys through it. So when you buy one of these kits, and there's a whole bunch of different ones out there, I'll link some of my favorite ones down below, but basically they give you a little adapter ring and you wanna get one that fits most of the lenses that you currently use. Otherwise you can use step up and step down rings. Now I'm using a 77 millimeter thread version because most of my lenses have that size front thread. You just take the other part and just slide it on and clamp it down here. This one actually has three slots on it so you can put up to three filters in it. Fingerprints are definitely the biggest problem with using four x four filters. You're gonna get them all over so definitely keep your little microfiber handy. ND filters are obviously nothing new. They come in all different shapes, sizes, abilities like variable ND filters, ones that go into matte boxes and everything like that. There is a filter that I think gets really overlooked when it comes to video work and that is the graduated ND filter. You see these filters being used all the time by photographers and especially landscape photographers because using something like this allows you to get those deep blue skies with puffy white clouds and all the colors and richness in the sky because it allows you to darken the top parts of the image but still leave the bottom part properly exposed for your subject and foreground. Unfortunately, I think a lot of videographers completely overlook the graduated filter and they just skip right to using ND filters and variable ND filters and don't even think about using one of these. And a huge part of that is probably because of their form factor. This is a 100 millimeter by 150 millimeter piece of glass. And obviously it's huge and clunky. And I found that something like this doesn't fit into a standard matte box. Most matte boxes are four by four or four by 
5.65. But so far, I haven't even found a map box that will allow you to use graduated filters and slide them up and down inside of the map box to match your horizon with wherever you need that ND grad to land. There are a ton of companies out there that sell these clamp on filters, and most of them are very similar and they shouldn't cost that much. This one, I believe, was only about $40. Just make sure that you get one that fits a 100 millimeter filter because if you get one that's too small and it doesn't fit, that's going to be a huge bummer. There are some cheaper alternatives from companies like like Koken. So the Koken filters are actually slimmer. They're about 82 millimeters wide and they're actually made of basically a plastic resin. So they're not as durable and strong as the glass and they actually even have a little bit of bend to them. And because they're made of this kind of plastic acrylic, they tend to scratch a lot easier than a good quality piece of glass does. So the ND filters that I'm using here are from KNF Concept. I've actually showed them on the channel before, but they're a good piece of glass and they don't cost that much. I believe they're about $70 a piece. And then the graduated ND filter that I'm using here is from ICE. And this is the ICE Grad ND8. And it's actually a soft graduated filter, so it has a really good fall off between the dark and light areas of the glass. They do make ones that also have a really nice hard stop in the middle, and that's great for those landscapes where you're gonna line it up perfectly with the horizon and there's not really anything else cutting into it like trees or buildings. This is a three stop graduated ND filter and that is how you can add three stops of dynamic range to any camera with just a simple piece of glass. So let's take a look at some of the example shots that I shot using this and I'll show you what it looks like with it on and with it off. Using graduated filters is not going to work properly in every single shot. There are times when buildings and subjects definitely get heavily affected by the graduated filter and just become way too dark. So you need to use it in the proper situations, but there's some really good times to use it, especially for those establishing shots and those wide angle shots where the subjects are much smaller in the shot and it's not quite the close up. If you are framing someone really close up and their head and their shoulders are pretty much filling the whole shot, yeah, this isn't gonna work super good because half their face is gonna be much darker than the other half of their face and shoulders. Of course, there are a whole bunch of companies out there that make filters like this, but two companies come to mind in particular. So the first one that comes to mind is Polar Pro, and they actually have their Summit system, which is primarily built for photographers, but it's really nice because it has ND graduated filters that actually have a full metal frame built around them, so you don't end up getting fingerprints all over your glass and then have to clean it all the time like I'm doing when I'm using these filters. And that nice metal frame around them, of course, protects it from drops and things like that. The other company that actually allows you to retrofit your own ND filters that you already own is H&Y. And that's pretty cool because they built metal frames that will clamp around your existing ND filters. So if you already own a bunch of four x four filters and these larger ones, just buy their frames that will actually clamp around it. One really cool bonus that I saw from those H&Y filters is that they're actually magnetic. So you can just stick them right to the front of your filter holder instead of having to drop them in. And you can stack as many as you want because they're all magnetic. A common misconception that I've heard around graduated filters is that you can't move the camera around once you're using one. You really got to stay stationary, locked off on a tripod. But that's honestly not true. There are a lot of times that you can use this for those moving, panning, even tilting shots and it still works. Now the tilt is where you're gonna see it the most. So if you're tilted up on the sky, you'll see that one part of the sky is gonna be much darker than the other part as you bring it down. But of course, if you have a prominent subject in the scene, like a big tree or building or person, when you're panning, you're definitely gonna see that subject 
get darker. Now, I also wanted to test out, could you go handheld with it? So I got a few handheld shots with it. And as long as I keep my horizon pretty much the same and don't dip down too much, yes, you can definitely go handheld when using these filters. And of course, like I showed you in the beginning of this video, you can definitely use these filters on a gimbal. So I've been using graduated filters much more frequently, especially while making this video. And I'm definitely gonna continue to use them for many, many years to come because they just add so much magic to your skies and allow you to get so much more detail than not using them and just using ND filters by themselves. There's just really something beautiful about using these. Now, that's how you add three stops of dynamic dynamic range to any camera, plain and simple. And guys, if you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe right now because I have a ton more videos coming out on shooting, editing, lighting, everything like that, and you don't want to miss it. All right, I'll see you in the next video.